Have you ever wondered how one of the most iconic wild animals, the wolf, reproduces? Wolves, creatures of beauty and mystery, have captivated the human imagination for centuries. Their social structure, hunting prowess and of course their reproduction, are subjects that have intrigued scientists and nature enthusiasts alike. The world of wolf reproduction is a fascinating one. It's a complex process, imbued with unique behaviors and rituals that are designed to ensure the survival of the pack. From the nuances of the mating season, to the careful selection of a mate, to the actual mating process. And finally, the birth and nurturing of the pups. Every step is a testament to the intricate workings of nature. Understanding the reproductive cycle of wolves not only gives us insight into their world, but also deepens our appreciation for these magnificent creatures. Stay tuned as we dive into the fascinating process of wolf reproduction. Wolves have a specific time of the year for mating. Do you know when this is? The rhythm of life in the wild is often dictated by the changing seasons, and for wolves, this is no different. The mating season for these intriguing creatures typically falls between January and March. Now, you might be wondering why this time frame is significant. Well, it's all about survival. In the harsh wilderness, timing is everything. Wolves have adapted to mate during the late winter months for a very strategic reason. By doing so, the gestation period aligns perfectly with the onset of spring. This means that wolf pups are born in the warmer months when food is more abundant. It's nature's way of giving these little ones the best possible start in life. The mating season is an important time in the life of a wolf. It's not just about reproduction, but also about strengthening social bonds within the pack. During this period, the alpha male and female who lead the pack, mate. It's an exclusive relationship, a testament to the monogamous nature of these fascinating creatures. But it's not all romance and roses. The mating season can also be a time of heightened tension. Rival males may challenge the alpha for the right to mate with the female. These power struggles can sometimes lead to violent fights. It's a stark reminder that life in the wild is as much about competition as it is about cooperation. The complex social dynamics during the mating season also have a profound effect on the pack. The cohesion and unity of the pack are often strengthened during this period as they rally to protect their future offspring from potential threats. It's a time of unity and anticipation as they prepare for the arrival of the next generation. So, as we can see, the mating season of wolves is not just a biological process, but a crucial part of their social structure, survival strategy, and life cycle. Now that we know when wolves mate, let's delve into how they choose their partners. Choosing a mate is a critical decision for a wolf, but how do they make this choice? In the wild, wolves don't swipe right or left to find their perfect match. Instead, their choices are governed by a complex mix of factors that are deeply rooted in their natural instincts. One of the key factors in this decision-making process is leadership. In a wolf pack, the alpha male and alpha female are typically the only ones who mate. This is because leadership is a sign of strength and resilience, qualities that are highly sought after in the animal kingdom. The alpha pair leads the pack, making critical decisions that ensure the survival of the group. Therefore, a strong and capable leader is a desirable mate because they can provide and protect for their offspring. Another crucial factor is health. Wolves, like many other animals, have an innate ability to sense the health and vitality of potential mates. They're attracted to individuals who display signs of good health, such as a shiny coat, clear eyes, and robust physicality. Wolves will also scent mark and howl more frequently when they're in good health, attracting the attention of potential mates. Compatibility is the third key factor. Even though wolves don't go on dates or share long conversations over dinner, they do spend a lot of time together. This allows them to assess each other's personalities and behaviors. If a wolf finds another wolf's behavior compatible and complementary to its own, it's more likely to choose that wolf as a mate. So there you have it. The choice of a mate in the wolf world is not a whimsical decision. It's a careful selection process influenced by leadership, health and compatibility. 
Each of these factors plays a crucial role in ensuring the survival and success of the wolf pack. Now that we understand how wolves choose their mates, let's explore the actual process of reproduction. The mating process for wolves is quite unique, but what makes it so different? To answer that, let's delve into the fascinating details of wolf reproduction. In the animal kingdom, wolves have a distinctive mating ritual that is unlike any other. This process centers around a phenomenon known as the copulatory tie. But what exactly does this mean? Well, during mating, the male wolf's reproductive organ swells, creating a lock of sorts that ties the pair together. This is the copulatory tie, a term that may sound rather peculiar to us, but is a crucial part of wolf reproduction. The tie can last from 5 to 36 minutes, a time during which the male and female are literally inseparable. This unique locking mechanism serves a very specific purpose. It ensures that the sperm has the best chance of reaching the female's eggs, thereby increasing the likelihood of successful fertilization. Another intriguing aspect of the wolf mating process is the male's role. Far from being a passive participant, the male wolf is actively involved in ensuring the success of the tie. He will often move his body in a way that helps maintain the tie and protect the pair from potential threats. This active participation underscores the male wolf's commitment to the process, marking him as an equal partner in the creation of new life. The mating process of wolves is a testament to the intricacies of nature. It's a delicate dance that, while it may seem strange to us, is perfectly suited to the needs of these majestic animals. It's a process that has been honed over countless generations, a testament to the adaptability and resilience of wolves. The mating process is just the beginning. Next, we'll look at what happens after mating. The story of wolf reproduction is far from over, as the journey from mating to birth is a fascinating one, filled with its own unique challenges and triumphs. After successful mating, female wolves go through a fascinating journey of pregnancy and birth. But what does this entail? Once the mating process is complete, the female wolf, also known as a she-wolf, embarks on an incredible journey of bringing new life into the world. This journey, known as gestation, typically lasts about 63 days. It's a time of tremendous change for the she-wolf, as her body prepares to nurture and give birth to a new generation of pups. The gestation period is a crucial time for the she-wolf. Her body undergoes a series of changes to create the best environment for the pups to develop. Just like in humans, she experiences hormonal changes, increased appetite, and a gradual enlargement of her abdomen as the pups grow inside her. In the wild, the birth of wolf pups usually occurs in the spring, aligning with the availability of prey. A she-wolf gives birth to her pups in a den, a safe and secluded place, often a small cave or a dugout area in the ground. The size of the litter can vary, but typically, a she-wolf gives birth to four to six pups. Now here's where it gets even more interesting. The wolf pack plays a significant role in raising the pups. The pack members, usually consisting of the alpha male, the she-wolf and several other adults, all contribute to the upbringing of the pups. They bring food, protect the den, and even babysit the pups when the she-wolf is away. This collective effort ensures the survival and growth of the pups, instilling in them the skills and behaviors necessary to thrive in the wild. The birth of pups is a remarkable event. The first few weeks are critical, as the pups are blind and entirely dependent on their mother for warmth, nutrition and protection. But this is just the beginning. The pups have a long way to go, and their journey from pups to fully grown wolves is nothing short of extraordinary. The birth of pups is a remarkable event, but it's just the start of their journey. Raising wolf pups is a community effort, but why is this so? In the wild, survival is a group effort, and this holds true for the wolf pack. Once the pups are born, the entire pack takes part in their upbringing. From the alpha to the lowest ranking member, each has a role to play. The alpha pair, or parents, are the primary caregivers but the other members contribute by babysitting, playing, and even regurgitating food for the young ones. Learning to hunt is one of the most critical skills for survival. The older wolves teach the pups by bringing back live prey and allowing the young ones to practice.